Welcome everybody! As I'm sure you've heard, there's a cool new chatbot that's taken the world by storm called ChatGPT. Anybody can use it by going to chat.openai.com and basically have a conversation. For example, we could say, explain Power Apps in simple terms, and we'll get a very thorough explanation for this or really anything else you want to ask. It's pretty cool technology. I've been playing with this for the last week or so. I'll admit I have some mixed feelings about it, but I do want to show you some ways that it might be able to make your life easier when developing Power Apps Canvas apps. I'll give you two examples, one that's pretty simple and then one that's a little bit more advanced. So let me move over to this tab here. And what we want to do is write a formula that will show distinct grades here in our dropdown. Behind this dropdown, I have a table here in Dataverse of students and their grades but there are obviously duplicate grades here. And in the app, I just want to show distinct grades. If I run the app as it is now, you'll see it's coming back with every single grade. So we need some formula here for items that will just pull back distinct grades. Let's see what ChatGPT has to say. So I'm going to say write a formula for a Power Apps Canvas app. It displays distinct values for the grade column from the student's table in a drop-down list. Let's give this a go. So giving us the formula and then giving a description of what it does. And then some of the assumptions that go into the answer here. Okay, so let's grab this and see if this will work. So back here, if I click on the drop-down, items is the property that we want to set. I just paste in what it gave us. I didn't tell it the name of the dropdown, so it's just saying dropdown one dot items, but items is basically this over here. So we can get rid of this part here and just go with the rest of what it gave us. If you look at the help for the distinct function, this first parameter is the table, the source, which is correct, that's students. And then the second parameter here is the expression or in our case, it's just a single column. So this is the name of the column in the table. All right, let's see what we get here. I'll save and then we'll run. And voila, we only get one of each grade. Interestingly, they are not in alphabetical order. So that's something we could go back and ask and refine. ChatGPT does keep a history of the conversation. So you can just build onto it with additional requests if you want to. I'll leave that for you if you want to do it. But let's move on to another example. Here I've got a contact screen, just pulling in a gallery of the contacts out of Dataverse, the default table. And what we want to do is when we click on one of these contacts here, we want to navigate to a details screen in edit mode. And we need to populate this details screen with the information from this contact up here that we clicked. To do that, we need to save the clicked item or the selected item into a global variable and then say navigate to the details screen. By the way, I do have a video on the channel specifically for how to do this. So link above and below if you're interested, but let's see what ChatGPT will give us. Okay, so we're saying write code for a Power Apps Canvas app. It should save the gallery's selected item as a global variable. Here I am specifying the name that I want it to use. Then I want to set the form contact details to edit mode as opposed to view mode, for example. And then we want to navigate to the screen contact details screen. So let's see how we do with this one. I will speed this up and we'll take a look at the output when it's done. Okay, here we go. We've got some code, we've got explanations about what it's doing, and then also the assumptions about the different names of things. So let's copy this code and then back to Power Apps. Here we want to select an item, Just select the top item in your gallery. And then the action that somebody takes or the event that we're responding to is on select. So up here, let's choose on select. And then I'll paste in everything it gave me here. And let's see how we did. So on our first line, we're taking the item that was selected from the gallery, which is gallery one in this case. So that's correct. We're saving it as a global variable called var current record. That's looking good. 
This next line here, we're setting the form to edit mode so that when we get there, we can edit the item as opposed to just viewing it. It got the name of the form correct. Now I ran through this a couple of times, and this is actually the only time that it got this particular line correct. <laughs> Previously, it actually tried to set default mode on the form, which was not a thing. So that part didn't work. I had to go manually update this, but interestingly, this time it got it correct. So definitely some inconsistencies and some validation that you're going to have to do, but it's a good start. And then this last line here, navigate to the contact details screen. This one, it didn't quite get right. This should be in single quotes and that should match the name that I have down here. There's spaces in the name like that. And you'll see that it resolved and turned green when all of that was correct. So pretty close, not too bad, I must say. So that takes care of this screen. We're in here, we're gonna click on one of these contacts, we're gonna navigate to the details screen, and then here we need to grab the value of that global variable and populate this form here. So let's go see if ChatGPT can help us with that. For this one, we're gonna say write code for Power Apps Canvas app. It should set a forms item property to var current record. So that's the global variable that we set just a second ago. Let's see what we get. All right, just a single line, pretty simple. It recognizes that this should have been set earlier in the app, which we did. Okay, let's copy this code. Back to Power Apps. Here we've got item selected which is what this first part of the formula is doing. So we can just get rid of that and basically just save our current record. Okay. I'll go to the context screen and then run this one. Let's select Nancy. And there's Nancy's details in the details page. So pretty cool, I must say. Now, obviously with both of these examples, I had to know the formulas and the naming and such so that I could tell ChatGPT the correct input. So for now, I don't see this as the machines taking over, but hopefully it can help you get started and save you a little bit of time. I'll definitely be playing with this a lot more going forward. Let me know below in the comments if there's something specific you wanna see and I'll give it a try. Also check out the Power Apps playlist for other tips and tricks that you might enjoy. Thank you so much for watching.